Kraft and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Joy in My House, inspirational reality show with a touch of recovery, a reality show where nothing is left unsaid. And no one is insignificant. Who shares, who shares, who shares? And I'm joined here by my co-host and recording artist, Lolita Robinson. How are you doing this morning? Welcome to another day of Joy in My House. Another day of Joy in My House. You Happy belated Valentine's Thank you. week or weekend or, <laughs> or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> How was your Valentine's? What did you do? You know what? I can't complain. And, okay. And you never do complain. You know what? I, I do. People just don't lately. don't hear me. But <laughs> yeah, me too. Who would want to listen to my complaints? But I had the opportunity to spend it with my older daughter, who's 20 years old, and okay. her daughter, which is my granddaughter, who's three, which is Lalika. Oh, how cute. And we have a Where'd tradition. Where'd you guys go? A val- I have a Valentine's tradition that I've had with my kids since my youngest my older daughter Alicia was born Mm -hmm. and I take them to color me mine oh that's right where they color color a pottery that's right you have been doing that I've been doing that for years and I took my granddaughter there and I posted a video up on Facebook and I bought her a little Louis Vuitton purse oh how cute no you did yes I had to oh geez she looks up to her mom so much and and (laughs) it wasn't too expensive she's walking around with it yes but (laughs) she looks up to her mom so much but because Alicia has been very good yeah. She's had her challenges and her struggles. Yeah, she has. But she went back to school. She graduated with honors. Oh, she's she in did. College Good now. For her. Yeah. She finished her high school and now she's in, in, in a community college and she's very studious. She's very diligent. She's actually very stubborn. When she wants something, she well, gets it and done. Now, and I hear Lalika is stubborn too. And so Al- what goes around, is, come around. Exactly. Right? <laughs> so I wanted to just honor Alicia through mm-hmm. her daughter, which I feel if you love my children, I right. love you. That's so. It. It was a good time to see my daughter so happy with her daughter. That's right. It brought a lot of peace and joy to me. That's really good. I miss my younger daughter who's in San Diego and my son yeah, who's and busy doing his own Valentine. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's 17. So. Oh, that's so cool. I think How we about moved, yours? Well, you know what? I got together with some friends and we had dinner. And I think the whole thing of Valentine is he was a, a man of God and he gave his life for a woman, I believe, I can't, I don't remember the whole story, but I know he gave his life for other people in the times of when people were persecuted. Really? See, I so didn't know that. Valentine's Day is not the what we're putting on it, which is beautiful for lovers to get together. I think a lot of people feel alienated if they don't have a love. No one that I know at, at this point in my life is in a significant relationship, but love is love. Right. It is to give back, it's to sacrifice, it's to appreciate all the people in our lives. So I think that's beautiful. And I got to spend time with girlfriends and things. And I don't really get upset about Valentine love. Right. I mean, it would be nice to have. I feel the same way. It'd be nice to have. It would be nice to have. I'm not ruling it out. (laughs) But until then, you know, hey, I congratulations to those of you all who had it. I hope you had a wonderful time. I hope people's expectations didn't cause a lot of fights and a lot of anxiety because or disappointment yeah you know and, and in this world there's so much pressure yes. with social media and and posting your pictures and posting this and you know and so, uh, discord I, when you were praying this morning right. about what happened in florida you know yes and my prayers and my heart goes out that's right to what's going on in florida and people are talking about gun control and and i believe the key to anything is education I we think it's hard to control. People. It's everything, you know. That's why it's so important that if your loved ones are there today, yeah. you know, if you, if we're not having an eventful time when negative, horrible things are happening, yeah. it's a really good day if your relatives are here and nobody's been killed or maimed right. or whatever. So for me, it was a really good Valentine's Day. Sounds like it was for you too. It was for me. I'm, yeah. I'm really grateful. And I always say this, I'm, I'm so grateful to the work God has done in my life. Mm-hmm. Had the opportunity to graduate from Celebrate Recovery. Yes. I wanted to talk about that. Yeah. What is that like? I mean, it, how long was the class? Is, uh, it went for about a year and a month. Gosh. And it's this my, is your I think third, my fifth, fifth one. Your fifth one. Good my for you. My fifth step study. And yeah. it was the next step, which was the first Celebrate Recovery out of Saddleback Church, which is Rick Warren's church. Mm-hmm. The program was designed by John Baker was the journey begins right 
this was the first time I did the second book, I think, or the second six, seven, and eighth book, which is The Journey Continues. Where did you do it? Do you do it out of Park Crest? We did it at Park Crest Christian okay. Church, Kathy okay. Taylor's Church, which right. is one of my accountability partners and right. a good friend of ours. But I keep talking about how each Bible program that I do, I learn something new. Right. And I had a chance to talk up there and, you know, you get, you have three minutes. And I wanted to say what I learned at this Celebrate Recovery. Mm -hmm. And it was trusting God. Right. Trusting him in all the things, the little things as well. Right. You know, like you said, Valentine's. Trusting God that, you know, I don't have to feel the pressure of not being in a relationship or, exactly. or feeling love. But I had the opportunity to give love right. to my daughter and my granddaughter. That's right. Worked out. And giving back to the people who are new and celebrate, who are sitting in the audience when you give when you're getting a chip and people who are there to hear the testimony that go this route. Let God do that healing. Oh. That's giving back. That's a lot of love when you yeah, give that I three wanna, minutes of right. what you've been going through. And I don't want to go and talk. I don't want to go share my dirt or talk about that. I, I want to. Yep. Stay at home and isolate. Right. But I remember I used to tell you when I used to call you in my most distressed days. Yep. And I tell me, Lolita, tell me that your way of living is better than mine. And <laughs> you used to tell me, you see the light at the end of the tunnel. Just you do. The suit peace. up and show up. I don't I think people don't realize what recovery is. I've been talking to some of the girls I'm sponsoring. And all recovery is is maturity and peace and living life in a sane adult manner. Amen. Now, all the other trappings, you know, fame right. or, you know, <laughs> relationships and, you know, promotions and jobs, that's all excellent. And I think people should go for it. But the main thing is no matter what's happening in life, no matter what trials are coming, if you can still kind of keep your peace, keep your composure, keep your foundation right. and deal with life in a very healthy manner mm -hmm. without addictions, that's what recovery is all about. Amen to that, because yeah. I had the opportunity to be at Saddleback Church on Thursday to wow. hear Daryl Strawberry, and oh my I booked goodness. him for the show. Uh, we'll, oh, we'll, give out the, we'll give out that oh announcement later. Oh, my gosh. What but a testimony. Him his and his wife, testimony. was she there, too? She heard... was not there. She's in Florida. She okay. was in Florida, but he came okay. and gave his testimony how he signed a $22 million contract with the Los Angeles Dodgers in oh, 1997. Florida. I remember Daryl Strawberry. And his wife was going to the crack house to pull him out. Oh, yeah. But I've heard their testimony. God grabbed a hold of his heart. Yeah. He was talking about that relationship with God. And I felt that I have that now. Through all these years of recovery, I have a trust in God that he Amen. will see me through. Yes. But I got to rely on him, not on me or no. my best way of, of thinking, thinking. Exactly. because that got me to where I used to be. That's right. God has really given me some tools now, like you said, through challenging times or through even joyful times where I'm able just to be present. Right. Right. Be uh, it was just oh that's too much and was, I know he's a cancer survivor also <laughs> yes he did is you speak of that yes he did I remember my son my husband my late husband God love him loved Daryl Strawberry and, and uh, Joseph when he was little Dusty Baker all of them so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I can't wait to that show well I want to thank you out there who are listening and viewing for being a part of the joy that we have in our house here on Joy in My House on www.latalklive.com know that you can find us on Facebook if you like the Facebook fan page you receive up to date lineups of guests and information we have an Instagram page where you can follow us on Instagram and a Twitter page on twitter.com backslash join my house where you can tweet us with any questions or comments we had a great show last year last year last, last year. week <laughs> for like you everybody. feel like last year <laughs> well Gail Gibson she's an actress and producer and she produced the ninth annual Lady in Red Diamond a ro uh, Rose Award show. And did you do the uh, red carpet? I did her red carpet. Okay, how I did, did that red go? Carpet. Amazing. Um, yeah. She was honoring women in media and entertainment, mm -hmm. but a lot of them were faith-based, and I thought that was amazing that Amen. they were giving glory to God. Amen. And again, like hearing uh, Daryl Strawberry and watching him on the Jimmy Fallon show mm -hmm. and say he was saved by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. He said on that network on the, TV. He said that where they kind of kind of shy hear. away Jesus. Yeah. And these girls, these women receiving awards for the amazing work that they're doing through their organizations, but yet giving glory to God was oh, amazing to that hear. That is so beautiful. I, that's the thing, the talents that God gives us. Like we have a beautiful woman in the studio today. I'm, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautiful young lady. But I, I, the thing that's beautiful is that we can use our talents. God can use it if he, we allow and him to. Get out there and, la and allow him to use the talents, whether it's acting, modeling, singing, or writing, or whatever. But 
letting people know that he is real and that he's there right. and he wants to have a relationship with them. That's right. And that you don't have to uh, give up your goals and aspirations to serve him. I am so happy that you're doing this. You get out there and do those red carpets all the time. You know, I, I try to because it, it, it keeps networks you in the me with the amazing... Is it hard for you? I know it's yeah, times when I, have to, I haven't had to minister like in a while on. because of what's going on in my life with my mom and my niece, but... It was never any fun. It's and, not. and Jensen Franklin said that. Did you ever hear him yes, say I that? Yes, I heard this. I heard this. That he does not like to get up and preach every week, but it's what he's called to do. That's how I feel. It's, it's People don't realize that. It's very hard to get up. Like Even when doing this, sometimes I'm like, I don't really, you know, but yep. it's what, so is it it's, hard for you when you have to yeah, do it? It's my calling to go out there and yeah. network. You know, I'm here hosting the show and co-hosting with you. But at the end of the day, my heart's not in that. I like to be behind the scenes. Right. So networking is, is something that I feel God really has given do. me good discernment, yeah. like today's guest. Yeah, I know. I've been wanting this guest to come on the You're show for, me. I think, over a year, if not more. I, but God sets up the time. Yes, and I does, always say huh? he books the show. I don't. He right. does. Because we have a great show for you today here on Join My House, ladies and gentlemen. We have Erin Green. She's a mentor, speaker, and co-founder of Twin of a Kind. Good. She's the owner of Pretty Girl Retreat, and she is a oh. contestant on America's Next Top model with Tyra Banks. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, you're and not going to want to miss. This is Joy and Mouse. I want you to stay tuned. We're going to come back with Erin Green. Yay! We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Hello. I'm Joel Ramirez. And I'm Lolita Robinson Coppage, and welcome to Joy in My House on LATalkLive.com. Inspirational radio with a touch of recovery. A reality show where nothing is left unsaid. And no one is insignificant who says it. Exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio RB or watch us on Ustream TV. Reality Radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live and we are more than just talk. Hi, this is Marsha Witeka inviting you to join me every Monday, 11 a.m. Pacific for Marsha's Music Shuffle. My show features music from the 60s and beyond, bringing you artists and songs that touch us in so many ways with lyrics, rhythm, and voices. Put your dancing shoes on and join me every Monday morning, 11 a.m. Pacific, for Marsha's Music Shuffle, exclusively on LATalkLive.com. Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Joy in My House, inspirational reality show with a touch of recovery. I'm joined here by author of Shape by the Master's Hand, Olita Robinson. And I'm so excited. Let's buckle up and get going. And our in-studio guest, Erin Green. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on. If you don't know, Erin Green is the founder of Twin of a Kind. Yes. You're the co-founder of Twin of a Kind with your twin sister. Oh, that's, are you identical? Identical. Identical oh, that's twin. that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> you are also the owner of Pretty Girl Retreat. Yes. Which is an amazing organization, and we're going to talk about that right now. But you're also on America's Next Top Model with Tyra Banks on VH1. Yes, I oh, am. Oh, my goodness. Congratulations. I want to ask you, you so many questions. Uh, but I did want to talk about this because I thought this was very significant because you actually the oldest contestant on America's Next Top Model where she just... Tyra Banks just lifted the age limit about seven months ago. Yes, okay. she did. Oh, my goodness. I'm not going to ask your age, but you look like 20 or 30. <laughs> so. Bless your heart. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Erin. 
her into it. <laughs> I love bless your heart. That's what I'm gonna tell people too. Bless your heart. <laughs> well, we met at a fashion show, and we can't figure out what fashion show. I don't no. know if you were at Metropolitan yeah, Fashion Week you you or met. LA Fashion Week, but I know we met. And yes, you're one very of those. statuesque. You're very stunning. Yeah, and I don't you. know how yes, we really are. We I got in contact with you or your sister, but was I had it, the. What, uh, the lady who, what was her, Dedna? Was that her name? Ed, uh, no. What's her name? The lady who used to put on all of the events for the um, children who were underprivileged children. No, that was Daphne Zeidman. It's no. not Daphne? It wasn't, it wasn't Daphne. It was, that was the Oscar party that I did. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't at an okay. Oscar party. Okay. But what's interesting is I had the opportunity to meet you guys, spoke to you guys, and I had to had an opportunity to host your pink carpet. Yes, you You had did. a great event for Pretty Girl Retreat. Thank you. You had a great pink carpet and a great step and repeat yes. and it was in Pasadena <laughs> one of my favorite places oh, tell too. us a little bit about Pretty Girl Retreat and yeah. that that event because I was you had what maybe 80 to 150 little girls running around yes we did um spectacular event oh, wow. Pretty Girl Retreat is a mobile spa and fashion party service for girls okay and so and it's also a development from the twin of a kind foundation so that's how it actually got started because parents were coming up to us my sister and I and telling us oh well you know is there anything that you guys do for just girls because you know our organization is co-ed and so that's how Pretty Girl Retreat got started and so my thoughts were I wanted to be able to focus on the self self-empowerment piece oh, as well girls. as yes for the mm -hmm. girls as well as um help them to you know feel good about themselves mm -hmm. you know have them get pampered and really show them what it means to love the skin that you're in mm -hmm. and that's what we actually teach teaching them how to um not only know themselves accept themselves and love themselves is what we want to um, teach them now what's so, the age range the age range is anywhere between five years of age all the way up to 25, That's you know. That's beautiful. Yes. Well, I don't want to, I'm sure he's going to ask you how you got started, how, it, you know, when it was, it's an offshoot of your other ministry, Twin Sisters? Or? Yes. Twin of a Kind Foundation was actually started back in 2008. We became a, t a nonprofit back in 2013. Mm -hmm. And so Pretty Girl Retreat didn't get started until about 2015, I want to say. You. Yeah. Good for you. Thank so you. you. Went back to the community. <laughs> well, I did want the audience and viewers to get to know you a little bit, Erin. We always uh, share a little bit of our story. Um, and I want to thank you for your transparency, first of all. Uh, a lot of people, you know, when they share their story, they glamorize it. The guests mm -hmm. that have come on the show talk about a lot of the hurts and mm -hmm. some of their challenges. Yeah. But we're not glamorizing the struggles that we face or the, the, the challenges that we've gone through. We're trying to hopefully give you some hope and inspiration, those of you who are going through some of the more similar mm -hmm. things. That guy can take you through. Oh, yeah. Okay. So let's talk about Erin, where were you born? I was born in Riverside, California at, in March Air Force Base. Oh, my um, gosh. But I have some southern roots from Lafayette, Louisiana, where, you know, it's great hospitality, go. good food, and just the right foundation, building of the right foundation so who's for me. from Louisiana, your mom or your dad? Or? My mom. My whole family is from Louisiana. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So obviously so somebody was in the Air Force, we're going to find out. Or the but you were, bo you were born here, but you were raised at a young age in Louisiana. In Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Tell us about growing up in yeah. Louisiana. I mean, like I said, you know, great hospitality. People are so kind. Um, but you know what? The We'll talk about that later in regards to kids being cruel. You know? <laughs> okay, yeah. It doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't at, right? matter where you're at. Okay. Um, but, you know, just family and building the right foundation. I had a great family and, uh, you know, religious faith um, was strong. And How many siblings are we talking? Right. Well, it was only in my sister and Just I. Just you and your sister. Okay. Yes. The twins. Uh huh. And okay. we're the only grandchildren as well, wow. you know. And so it, it was it was a very, I said, trying time um, to be able to grow up with an identical twin sister, you know. Mm. Well, and let's, having, talk, let's talk about yeah, that. Really. Did you grow up with both parents in the household? Yeah. I grew up with only my mother. And um, my mother is my rock, my everything, mm -hmm. my best friend. And um, her name is Andrea Bernard, and she raised the both of us, you know. Your dad wasn't around? My dad was not around, okay. and um, that hurt really bad. Mm -hmm. And I went through some self-esteem issues, um, not knowing my self-worth, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And I struggled a lot, you know, not having my father around. But my mom, you know, she worked her butt off, you know, to try and raise girls. two little girls. And I give everything, not only to God, but just 
allowing her to have us and to be the strength in our everything in our lives. That's beautiful. Yes. So your mother, your grandmother, obviously, was your grandmother influential and aunts and uncles? Oh, yes, they, so definitely. So they took you to church when you grow up? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, and, you know, my family is raised uh, was raised Catholic, you know, right. and so although I am Christian faith, um, you know, growing up, being Catholic, you know, you go to catechism. Yeah, you did me too. And, yeah, yeah. you, you know, and Holy Communion. The yes, whole day, right? yes. You say you're Holy Mary, right. you know, you yeah, Mary's and, <laughs> you know, all of that, you know. And so I remember growing up, going through all of that. But, um, but although, you know, I am Christian faith right now, um, it's all the same. You know, we all it believe is. in one thing and that's God, well, you know, and true. our God that's is true. everything. Well, I'm sure how else going to ask you when he became very personal to you? Because I know as children, question. you're you know, right on track. I know we're going to do. Yeah. Do you remember accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you remember taking that step? It's so uh, individual for each guest that comes on and shares how they really said God and they cried out to God. What was your experience like? You know, um, accepting God um, mm -hmm. in my life was... I guess one of the most precious moments in my life. I can see you know? it in your face now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, yeah. And um, it was a time that I was going through a lot of hurt, disappointment, a lot of anger. And I was leaning on my own understanding at the time mm -hmm. and didn't know where to actually go, who to go to. And um, it, it was just me being able to realize that I couldn't do it on my own, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that the Lord, you really, I had to really develop a relationship with him mm -hmm. and only him to understand what it was that I needed in my life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Jesus sacri Jesus went through a lot, <laughs> a lot of you. suffering and a lot of pain. Yes, and I know for a fact that we are going to be going through a lot of suffering and pain. Mm -hmm. And that is something that God, you know, wants us to understand. Mm -hmm. But he wants us to get to a point in our lives that we need to be able to understand from him that he wants us to heal. And by healing, we're gr growing closer and fonder to him mm -hmm. and building that relationship up. And so at that time when I accepted him in my life, I was accepting him knowing that I couldn't lean on my own understand, understandings anymore. Everything mm -hmm. that I was going through, whether it was abusive relationships um, or just trying to figure out why or being frustrated and impatient with why, why is this happening to me, mm -hmm. um, was a very trying time for me. And I understood at that moment that I couldn't do it on my own anymore. Mm -hmm. I had to rely on someone. I had to lean on him in order to do that wow well, that's, that's a lot that's said. very beautifully said i just wanted to ask you were you and your sister close i would think that having a twin sister uh identical twin um you'd be really close in everything do you feel each other's feelings or is that just the stuff that they put out in the movies and stuff what's it like were you and your sister really close or Yes, um, my identical twin sister. Her name is Desiree Green, and um, we were we are very close. Mm -hmm. And I think growing up, I had to lean. We leaned on each other. We mm -hmm. were each other's best friends, mm -hmm. um, still are, and we're so very close. We felt each other's pains when true. we would yeah. actually separate from one another. Wow. You know, especially when we went off to college. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was only for about a year, mm -hmm. you know, that we can actually stand to be apart that long. But when we were apart, we were able to feel each other, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, especially when I got, when, when I found out I was pregnant, mm -hmm. I found out I was pregnant like six months later. And, um, and I was running track at the time and she felt it. You know, and she was, I wow. was in Louisiana. I was in uh, going to Grandma State University and she was back in Bakersfield, California. And um, she felt everything that I was going through. And she went to my mom, was like, you know, mom, is something going on with Aaron? You mm -hmm. know, and at that time she knew, you know. So, <laughs> I mean, we feel a lot of things to, you know, with each other. It was a, it was a great time for Desiree and I to be able to build our relationship up because even through childhood, mm -hmm. um, and being an identical twin, we were bullied a lot. Okay, yeah. And that's the next wow. step. You know, wow. having thank had you the, for sharing that. Hi, Desiree, love to you and your family. And having had the opportunity to hear your testimony mm -hmm. and speak to you, mm -hmm. uh, you said something that was profound to me. That you said, even though you had your twin sister and you had somebody there, you still felt alone. You felt like the pain that you were going through was mm -hmm. still 
just you because you did struggle with some bullying during your growing up in Louisiana. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, um, you know, growing up with your partner, your identical twin sister, mm -hmm. um, you know, we were, we were very close, but at the same time, it, it felt as if, even though we had each other, we didn't have, you know, you need something. We needed of something yourselves. else. Yeah, yes. of course you do. Yeah. And when we were being bullied, a lot of kids, you know, would come up to us and say, because we were identical, double your pleasure, double your fun. So they enjoyed, you know, picking teasing on us and, and teasing us. You. Yes. Was this racially motivated because you were in Louisiana? Was you it? know, <clears throat> I, I wouldn't say that. I mean, at the time we were young, mm -hmm. so you know, we didn't understand why they were, you know, choosing to pick on us, mm -hmm. um, mainly because of the way that we looked. You Beautiful know, our, our size. They said that we looked awkward. They used to clown us about You're our very tall. Yeah, mm -hmm. we were very, you know, very thin. You know, and they said we had knobby knees. We mm -hmm. had big Afro hair, mm -hmm. so they used to call us microphone heads. Their, my, our, our big, large foreheads, big gums. I mean, they used to talk about us all the time. But kids find anything. Mm -hmm. that, they do. That, that's yeah. that's that's odd. But during that time, we all go through that awkward stage. It's it's just so intense how some kids just really dig deep and just are just mean they are it's it's, it's so crazy because look at you guys now thank you you're willing to gosh i'm thinking about uh, when you share this obviously like maybe the lord was preparing you to toughen your skin oh, yeah. because to be in we we're not going to get to the modeling yet i'm sure but my god you're on stage you're under a microscope mm -hmm. everything that you have every flaw your personality i mean you are really so you have to have some kind of toughness to be able to stand up under probably what you're going through now. Would, would oh, you yeah. say that God maybe used it to prepare you? Oh, yeah, definitely. You, you know? know, all the life experiences yeah. and challenges and adversity that I've been through in my life has mm -hmm. prepared me for this very moment. Oh, and I I'm so that. grateful for it. But I like what you said about healing. And I like the That's fact that, because um, we've we got to cover so many topics, that you're coming alongside little girls. Mm -hmm. And being able to be with them in that awkward stage, which we all go through. Mm -hmm. So you have been there hands on that you can really relate oh, yes. to these children and Definitely. have a heart for them. That touches my heart, Aaron. It, that, wow. that word healing, I mean, you know, healing, I've, I've been yeah. hearing it for the last two weeks. Every mm -hmm. sermon I hear, every, you know, Daryl Strawberry talked about it. And, and mm -hmm. you know, at Celebrate Recovery, we talk about the healing that happens in CR. Mm -hmm. Because while you were going through these bullying, somebody saw you jumping fences, running away from your bullies, Were they you and your you? sister. Were they fighting you? Oh, yeah. Uh, we had bullies almost every other day chasing us, hitting us, and, you know, just picking on us. And every your mom, your mom and them couldn't step in or they didn't My know. mom tried to do the best that she could. Mm -hmm. She was working and mm -hmm. she would work long hours, you know, to really take care of us. And, uh, you know, we would tell her and our mom, bless her heart at the time. It was Back so then we used to tell us fight your fight. They wouldn't coddle us. We'd have to fight ourselves. Right. Right. Yeah. But, but your you mom know, had mom, something interesting oh, yes, to say. She, she had say? something interesting to say. She would, you know, we would come to her, tell her what our worries and our concerns were uh -huh. and what was happening with us. And she would always tell us, tell, tell them that you're going to pray for them. Oh. And I would respond, my sister and I would respond with, what are you talking about? We're going to tell them no, to go we to Jesus. Told that. We were told that. <laughs> you know, and we couldn't at that point, oh, we couldn't, right. we didn't know the extent of that. We didn't know what the background was to that. We oh just boy. thought, you know, right, we're going to go to them and just say, you need Jesus, you know. <laughs> and we didn't really understand what that really meant. Well, how did the Lord intervene? I'm well, sure. Well, that's where we're going I know, next. I know. We're <laughs> like, you know, this is my son here. And so. And Lito always talks about how God places, you know, people in our lives yeah. to give us a little direction, a little protection, because there must this have been person somebody that must have saw you yeah. jumping fences and running away from your, from your, from your bullies. It was my guardian angel. <laughs> approached you. Yes. He was a track coach mm -hmm. and asked you to join the track team. Oh, you're kidding. And yes. when you found out that you were fast and talented, oh. you got some level of comfort, some level of 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 of, of uh, confidence and some and level of popularity. When this gentleman This was our junior year in high school. So you went through all of this up until mm -hmm. Oh jeez, Aaron, and yes. you're so sweet. Your spirit is so loving. Thank you. I mean, you could have really been a real biatch as they say, a, a hostile and and cold right? and mm -hmm. but you know, you haven't become that. So no, let's, not let's at hear all. about this guardian angel. Yes, I mean 
I, I think, you know, we were so tired of running and we had been running from everyone all of our lives and been so isolated, depressed to the verge of, you know, suicidal ideation. And one day we're running from our bullies, jumping over fences. The very next day, a track coach approached us out of class and said, hey, what were you guys doing? You know, running from our bullies, of course, you know. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, why don't you guys join the track team? And so at that moment, I knew... I, what what are you talking about not me you know I'm going home and crying in the corner you know mm -hmm. but he said why don't you just come out take a chance mm -hmm. you know and what we found out was that <laughs> we were fast <laughs> and we were <laughs> beating so. people you know oh, and that actually changed a whole lot for us you know you remind me of Deion Sanders said the same thing I remember reading his book he talked about he became fast because he had to always pass the cemetery mm -hmm. and he was terrified <laughs> wow. so the way from school he would just bolt right <laughs> so who knew yeah i mean god can use anything oh yeah who knew so you guys ended up being on track oh yeah and we oh, were good and jumping hurdles obviously <laughs> yes <too. laughs> oh, like we wow. talk about you know wow. when Luda always talks about god places somebody wow. gives a little bit of protection a little bit of direction yeah, was he yeah. but it was good and high school changed for you, mm -hmm. you got and you more went straight off from the other kids. Oh yeah, definitely mm -hmm. more. Um, we gained popularity. Not only that, we gained a family, and we had friends. Now, you what know, do you mean? oh, because of the track team, the right. track team, mm -hmm. right, right. And that's what grew our confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, we actually learned at that moment that each step we took, every race we ran, mm -hmm. was a risk we were taking, and by taking those risks, gained our confidence. And that was the most important piece of all of that. Mm -hmm. We knew at that moment that that's what we had to continue to keep doing in order mm -hmm. to build our self-esteem and our self-worth. Oh, that's wow. beautiful. Very well, well said. But what's amazing, and again, having the privilege to have heard your story before, uh -huh. right after high school, you guys, you went straight directly into college. Oh, yeah. Right after. And it was still difficult finding your identity, though, because oh, now yeah. the... It, the level changes. High school, you're getting a little popular, but then college, it's, you're like you're starting all over again. Yes. And let's talk about that because it still was difficult and you were looking for love in all the wrong places. Yeah, did you get involved in uh, things in high school, uh, partying after a while after you got with the track team? Did any of that come in? Oh play? my goodness. You guys, college is a whole nother beast in itself mm -hmm. from okay. high school. Yes, it is. And we weren't really prepared for high, for college at mm -hmm. all. You know, I think during high school, we were just trying to gather ourselves, who we were mm -hmm. as individuals. And being able to go into college, you know, was, it actually started all over again. You mm -hmm. know, the bullying, you know. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, in yeah, college? definitely. You, you were know. you in Louisiana then? No, no, no. I was in uh, Bakersfield, California is where we got our, uh, Cal, Cal State Bakersfield was oh, where we received our scholarship. You're kidding. And at that moment, what it kind was. What for that? It, you know, we didn't look like an adult. <laughs> we look like little kids, mm -hmm. you know, we were, we're very late bloomers mm -hmm. and um, we were just looking like little girls, you know, and so we Tall had little girls. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but still, but still, you know, and oh, because were you still competing with the track? Is oh, that, yes, we were so still competing. Is that where the bullying was coming from in the competition? Not so field much, not so board? much track. It was just not being accepted, okay. you know, from a new crowd, you mm -hmm. know, and we're thinking that, oh, this is college. This is adult life, yeah. you know, so we're going to be accepted and have people, you know, just, you know, be warm and intelligent and gentle with us. Mm -hmm. But no, it, it was just a whole nother beast. And so mm -hmm. that was scary in itself, you know, but I think the track team is what, uh, again, helped us um, because so we were good and fast. Been, <laughs> those girls must have gone through things too. Your other, What about your other sisters that were running tracks? Were they going through their challenges also? Yeah, everyone had their own challenges. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we were the youngest on the track team. Oh, wow. And so that was really difficult too because every time we would travel to go other places, mm -hmm. my sister and I were the one, we were the youngest, so we were left behind mm -hmm. while everyone else kind of went out, partied or and did whatever, whatever, you yeah. know. Okay. And so that was kind of rough as well. But I mean, it was just um, trying to overcome that um, and, and being able to, you know, again, we were fast. So the that's warmth. Amazing. Yeah. And so our, the teammates were our family. And that's how we, again, just continued to stay focused on one thing. And that was our saving grace was to be able to stay focused and not worrying about the, our bullies or people not accepting us for who we were. And so from there, we were actually sought off as models. 
at that point. That's amazing. So that so that world did that keep you from getting involved in drugs and alcohol because you have to be focused, I think, and keeping your body fit and running. Did that keep you from getting involved in, let's say, vices, as they say, or I would yes, I would say that. Okay. Um, I think growing up, my mom really kept us away from all of that, Good for her. sheltered us from that, Good for and her. not only that, I think we were so focused on you know isolation right. that we weren't exposed to a whole to lot. A whole lot. You well, know. Which had its good and then kind of had its bad, too. Yeah. Yeah, so then here comes the modeling. Oh, Lord, yes. The Lord just had, wow, he just had it all. Sometimes I think, Lord, you could have made it a little easier. Though. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, I, come I you, agree. You could have made it a little easier. So well, I'm sure you're going to talk about fellas or, you know. And I think that's the next step. Yeah. Um, because you said you were still, even though you found this family with your track mm-hmm, team and, mm-hmm. and you had some level of security, uh, you're still an individual. So some of the choices that you made looking for love in all the wrong places oh, yes. came with some consequences. And I wanted to touch on that because uh, you have a great career that we're going to talk about in a little yeah, bit, wow. but it came with such sacrifice and such challenges. And I wanted to touch on those. Tell us a little bit about trying to find that love in all the wrong places. Cause I think a lot of young girls out there listening yeah. can really take from this. Yeah. Um, not having a father growing up was mm-hmm. very difficult for yeah, me. Yeah. And, my mom wasn't the the type of woman to bring men around and just like flaunt them in front of us, Good you know. So and so, you, yeah, I wasn't able to see what it looks like, what it feels she didn't like. Have uncles? Did you have uncles or cousins or? Well, at the time we were in California, right. and so my mom was very focused on raising us, going to work, and coming back home. So mm-hmm. we didn't really have time. Um, to do a whole lot in the time that we did have together, it wasn't around a lot of men, okay. you know, so I didn't know what it felt like, what it looked like to have a man love a woman or a woman to love a man. And mm-hmm. so me not having a male father figure in my life, mm-hmm. it was very difficult to um, find that in a, a partner, you mm-hmm. know, and so I struggled because where would you I, meet? Where could you meet them? Like men, the male I met, team I'm, or, I met or just men? At a club. Okay. <laughs> so when you did kind of get out of the, you started going out to the club. Oh, yeah. I started, okay. I was getting out and I was meeting men at all the wrong places. Mm-hmm. Not that I was looking for, but it was right at my doorstep, mm-hmm. you know, and finding out that, you know, the men were cheaters, liars, all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. And um, trying to find that father figure, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, a, a man that's going to support me and take care of me. And I found out through the absence of my father that mm-hmm. he was teaching me how to not make all the wrong choices, I guess. Wow. And to become and to allow him to become your father. Because yes. you have a handsome man with you today, which I can't wait to hear how you met him. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, that's next because yeah. God still blessed you, even though you had yeah. a, a, you were searching in all the wrong places and you still had some level of trying to find this void. God still gave you a mate. And mm-hmm. I wanted to just touch on that really quickly. Yeah. Tell us about meeting your husband. My husband is he's my nice. everything. Oh, he's a nice gentleman, <laughs> too. Very nice. <laughs> and this nice young man that you are. God has given you men around you. Yes, he <laughs> is. son, you know. And I am so grateful. My oh, yeah. husband's name is Charles Jones. And we've been together for 12 years. That's he so will probably wild. know more than me. That's <laughs> beautiful. How did you guys meet? We met at... Uh, 24 hour fitness. Okay. Fitness gym. There you go, girl. You can yes. see she did all the right things, girls. Get disciplined. <laughs> yes. Get disciplined. <laughs> and didn't you. even see it coming. Um, okay. He just approached me. And I don't think that until three months later, after he continued, because you know, I'm an identical twin sister. So he saw us both at the gym. Well, didn't realize at the time that it was both of us. Oh, but then realize that oh, it was. Oh, that's hilarious. So, so yes. he was talking to different. <laughs> yes, he was. You know, so I always question, are you sure you got the right one? Yeah. <laughs> But um, it wasn't until like three months later that we actually um, got together for our first date. And um, but he is my everything, you know, and I'm just thankful to God because I've been praying and praying and praying, you know, for this man of God to come into my life. Mm -hmm. Not only that, to have a vision for his family. He Mm -hmm. is very devoted to his family and does everything that he can to support all of us. Mm -hmm. And he's here with me today, supporting me along with my my son as well. And, um, you know, I am just so grateful. Well, how many children do you have? 
I have five children. What? Yes. <laughs> this is not fair. I'm going to start running. <laughs> you look what? Five kids? Yes. Oh, Erin, you look fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wow. Well, I also wanted to talk about this part before we go to a commercial break because this was a, a difficult, uh, challenging time because you got the opportunity to meet your dad. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. And you had a lot of questions for him mm-hmm. because it was a lot of hurt and a lot of void. Let's touch on that. Yeah. Yeah. My, I was on a vacation with my sister at the mm-hmm. time. And when I returned, our husbands actually um, surprised us with our father on our doorstep. What? Yes. And so I he was wasn't so in blown, your lives at all? Not at all. No hands on, no, every no. not, nothing. Nothing. Not even a birthday card. <laughs> oh, wow. And so How did they he find surprised, them? yeah. Well, we knew where he was, okay. you know, mm-hmm. and they found him, brought him to our doorstep. And, you know, I just held him for about 30, 40 minutes and just cried, you know, mm-hmm. and he allowed it. And um, and I just wanted to know what it felt like to hold my father, mm-hmm. you know, how would he hold me back? And mm-hmm. will he be there to wipe my tears, you know, and I wanted to make up for all of those times. And so... I think um, he was able to tell me this. At the time, I was so, I had so much emotions, you know, and I had so many questions that I wanted to ask him, Mm -hmm. you know, and I was dealing with anger, hurt, disappointment, um, isolation, all different types of things, low self-worth, everything. And, you know, I I asked him why, you know, why didn't, why weren't you there? You know, and he, Mm -hmm. that's when I found out that, you know, I had five other brothers and sisters, you know, and he, he had told another me family? he had another family okay. and he <clears throat> told me that he did not raise any of the girls, but that he raised the men. And so at that point, I was very angry, you know, mm-hmm. like, why? Why separate us? Why mm-hmm. leave us out? You mm-hmm. know, and um, he told me one thing after, out of all the questions that I asked and how I just was so disappointed and not you know, and just angry with his answers, mm-hmm. you know, but still enjoying the moment, having just being, him, yeah. having them there, you mm-hmm. know. He told me one thing that I will never forget. He says, I know you are hurting. I know that I probably haven't answered all of the questions the way that you wanted me to answer them. But he told me that God was with you every step of the way. He always had you. Mm-hmm. And at that moment, I had to sit back and process that. Mm-hmm. Now, I didn't process that until after no, he left. I, I bet it took some time for it that. It took me some time. Yeah. And I had to truly understand what that meant. Mm-hmm. And at that moment, that's when I forgave him. Mm-hmm. You know, And it was so powerful because I knew at that moment that God didn't... God was with me all along. Mm-hmm. And every time I questioned him, every time I yelled at him, screamed at him, whatever it was, he was always there. Mm-hmm. And whether he was my boyfriend, my my husband, my my friend, whatever it was, he was there coaching me, guiding me every step of the way, mm-hmm. you know. And whether I was upset with my father for what, he, but for him being absent in my life, mm-hmm. God was always there, and He wanted me to always trust in Him, and love Him first. And but you still like, had to go wow. through the process, though. You still had to, he gave you the opportunity to talk to him and to confront. You probably he probably didn't have much to offer when you saw him, did he? Not was much. he emo- was he emotionally present or was he kind of like he was? Mm-hmm. But I didn't know what that looked like mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I never really saw his emotions. I never knew what that authenticity was right. coming from him. Right. You know, so I kind of just took it for face value, and so that was just a very difficult time for me. Is he still living? He is. Okay. Do you mm-hmm. have a relationship with him now? I do. I, I have a relationship with him, um, but there's a lot of promises that are not kept. Okay. So it, it, it hurts, That's but okay, I've but learned to, you right. know, kind of just move on. And, and So you get to see you, had the, be, you yes. had the best dad. Mm-hmm. I think when you get older, like you're saying that um, I didn't understand how the Lord used my life also taking me from my family in Chicago as... But as I got older, I could see God's wisdom in it. Mm-hmm. And he was protecting me and taking oh, care yes. of me without me realizing it. So right. now you can see what God was doing. Oh, yeah. And yes. And you, because of yeah. this, you forgave him. And you were also grateful to him because he drove you to be an overcomer. He drove you to now be in the position that you are because yeah. you later began your modeling career. Yes, which are we gonna we're going to just touch on before we go to a commercial break. <laughs> I know. Because you did begin your modeling career. Is your career. sister a model too? Yes, she is. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is she? You're not competing with each other on top no. model, are you? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. But I wanted to touch on this. Yeah. Um, 
and we'll talk a little bit about your 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 coming on America's Next Top Model. But I yeah, wanted to touch good on good for you. Wow, you've had some challenges, but you start your modeling career. What would you say to somebody out there who's listening and viewing, who's young, who's interested in becoming a model or start their career because it's glamorized? Social media is sensationalized. Yeah. What would you say to somebody a little bit younger wanting to start their career? Yes, that's a really great question. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And although, you know, beauty is so glamorized on television and Mm -hmm. on, on social media these days, we have to remember that beauty is confidence. Mm. And what I mean by that is that we have to start to encourage our young folks that it's not about looks and sizes. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's about your wit, your attitude, your charm, Mm -hmm. your life circumstances, your, um, the challenges that you've overcome, uh, your personality, all of these things make Mm -hmm. up your beauty, your Your character. character. And Mm -hmm. if we can start pushing those conversations about that and start letting our kids know that, you know, our beauty is the makeup of who we are, Mm -hmm. you know, then we can start changing the definition of beauty. Amen. Well, that Very must well be. Said. Well, you know what? Because I know we have to take a commercial break because everybody's not going to be a top model. No. So, what do you do for those young girls who are not built to be models? I mean, I'm sure you're helping them to find what their talent is and to go for that. How do you do that? Because everybody's not, doesn't look like you and have the modeling professionally is not in our cards. So, and, and you're so right. Mm-hmm. You know, I think for me, when I wanted to start my family, I spoke with my husband and like, hey, you know, we're going to raise a family. <laughs> you should <sure laughs> you know? raise a family. Yeah. And yeah. At that <laughs> moment, I, um, you know, at that moment, I said, you know what? I don't think I'm going to become a supermodel. But my passion is to model, to be on someone's runway, to either grace a cover of a magazine or something. So what I did was I focused on just that. It wasn't focusing on the fact that I needed to go to the top agencies to try and pursue this career. Mm -hmm. It was something that I loved to to do. do. I wanted to do it for me. And I think God poured in me to do this and ordain my steps to actually prepare me for this moment. However, he actually said, you know what? Don't become impatient. Don't become frustrated with the process Mm -hmm. you do what you love to do whatever is passionate in your heart you do it Mm -hmm. and that's what i did amen to that and you could take those other little girls and whatever talent they have and you're modeling for them whatever life is going to bring for them the challenges and how to stand behind that definitely wow aaron that's beautiful ladies and gentlemen this is joy mouse when we come back aaron green is going to talk about her america's next top model experience a pretty girl retreat conference that's coming up you're not going to want to miss this is joy in my house i want you to stay tuned we're going to come right back choices of internet radio and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Hi, this is Marsha Witeka inviting you to join me every Monday, 1 p.m. Pacific for Born to Talk, where conversations plus connections equals community. This is the heart of my show each week as my guests share their stories from nonprofits, authors, sports figures, travel experts, and much more. If you have a story to tell, I want to share it. Don't forget to tune in to Born to Talk every Monday, 1 p.m. Pacific, exclusively on latalklive.com. And you can watch live on Facebook and Twitter. If you missed the live show, check out my website, borntotalkradioshow.com, where you can watch on demand. Born to Talk every Monday, 1 p.m. Pacific, where conversations plus connections equals community. Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Join My House, inspirational reality show with a touch of recovery. 
a reality show where nothing is left unsaid. And no one is insignificant who shares, and I'm really getting blessed today. I'm joined here do. by my co-host, Lolita Robinson. Very good to be here. Let's and finish. And our in-studio guest, Erin Green. Welcome yeah, back hello. to the show. Thank you. Before your next question, girls or boys, why the five are mixed up? Uh, mixed up. Co- okay. Mm-hmm. Two uh, boys, three girls. Okay. Are any of the girls uh, runners or interested in track or modeling or... No, I mean, although they do run track, um, mm-hmm. I think that all the kids are very athletic and okay. are very much in shape, and we continue to support them in everything that they do. Oh, that's so cool. Yes. Actually, I can't believe five <laughs> kids. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> when do you sleep? Um, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Treats yeah. and nonprofit organizations, and now a top model. Now I want to get into that. Let's I'm go. I'm going to rest yeah, when I'm up with the lowest. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I wanted to talk about that before we went on a commercial yeah. break. We talked about you being a contestant on America's Next Top Model yeah, on VH1, how did that happen? which is Tyra She's Banks' so happy. show. I, Ty- I love Tyra. <laughs> I love Tyra. <laughs> Talk about how you got cast. It was very interesting. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I received a post. uh, So I'm always on social media. Well, yeah, somewhat on social media. Okay. And I saw um, a post that came through my through my thread, and it was like, oh, so now all the old hacks can you know can sign up for America's Next Top Model. And I'm looking at it. I'm like, are you serious? Is Is that what they said? Yes. They were clowning. Oh. (laughs) They were clowning. Okay. And so when I saw it, I was just like, and uh, on the post it actually had a video clip where Tyra is basically stating that she is now she's was off on cycle 23 okay but coming back for cycle 24 and the new twist of the show is that she is actually um that she is actually going to lift the age limit off and so okay. when I saw the post uh, the caption was like oh so now all hags can you know basically <laughs> sign up and audition for the show so I was like oh I'm on it there you go and so I submit I made a submission and I went to my husband how and do you I do said, that like on online just uh... yes it, it it came with the instructions okay on the actual uh post Okay, and so I I put in my submission, and at that very moment, after I was done, I went to my husband and I told him about it, and I said, "Watch how God works, right?" He's like, "Wow!" And so my husband was like, "What? What are you talking about? You know, like what did you do? You know?" And so when after that, you know. Two weeks later, the phone call came in and oh. I was just, and so I went to go to my husband and it was just like, all right, we got to get prepared. Like, oh so goodness. I'm like, what? Are you serious? Like, what happens when they, okay, let's, let's live through you. So what happens? How do they contact you? They call you they or called just, me. and say, we want you to be on the show? Oh, yes, definitely. Oh my goodness. And then you have and to where go was through. And what was the show? The show, is it filmed here in New York? Well, for Cycle 24, it was filmed in Los Angeles. Okay, mm-hmm. okay, okay. Yes. All and right. so at that moment, I was just like, okay, babe, what are we going to do? Mm-hmm. Like, he, how are we going to get prepared? Like, and he said, don't ask me. You said watch God work. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. God. And, you know, the main concern was, was like, okay, you're going to hold it down? You're going to hold it down, right? You know, because you have the yeah. kids, the house and everything. You know, I'm going to be gone, you know. And so... Oh my goodness! It was just a whirlwind experience, you know. But you're still to... in it, right? Oh yes. Okay, that, so have people been eliminated? Oh yes. Oh. We're we're about to go into the sixth episode, oh, which is going to air how Tuesday. Crazy is that? How stressful is this? Very. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, girl. I mean, didn't you have enough stress? coming up in life but that's what i'm saying god has really prepared you is your competition with the girls i mean i know you i know you have to kind of be cool oh yeah the show i can't say too much yes <laughs> is there a lot of competition is there a lot of kind of bullying on the you oh know? yes i mean i'm what? in the i'm in the house with uh f- 14 other girls what? and so just them being catty and having so much drama i think um with me it was a lot different you know because i didn't pretty much add that drama i right. think i had um, a very high emotional intelligence being on the uh, and, show, and Tom opposed too. to yes, I'm sure opposed yeah. to all the other young ladies on the show. Right. So it was a, a advantage for me. Oh, and you know what's interesting wow. is they call you Mama Erin. Yes, yes. And I didn't get a chance to touch on this before we went commercial break, but you graduated with your degree in family and marriage therapy. Yes, what? I did. Erin, <laughs> yes. Oh so you talked That's about what I was doing before the show. <laughs> and you were talking about God, and Lolita was mentioning wow. about God was preparing you step by, by step steps. for what so you do. So you're in there ministering to these girls, really. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Hello. I'm sure. I mean, you're riding, riding a wave, and God is going to do something magnificent, what he's doing. But I'm sure you're coming alongside these young girls. Oh, right. Yes. And what they're going through. Mm-hmm. 
Aaron, this is so cool. So I wanted to talk about before we start talking about your event coming up with Pretty Girl Retreat, but what have you taken away so far? Because yeah. this is just a sixth episode coming up from the experience so far yeah. on America's Next Top Model. I think that um, something that I've taken away is that not the girls on the show, you know, mm -hmm. taught me a lot, mm -hmm. you know, to really be in the present and to act now, you know, and not really, um, I don't, it, it's difficult to say. Not hesitate, it, not, yeah, not hold back. Not hold back. Because I but, see the, these young women nowadays, they are very, um, they're quick. They're yes. witty, they're quick, and they're willing to put it all out there. Oh, yeah. Right away. Yes. Where when you have a little bit of maturity, you tend to kind of assess the situation. I do. I mm -hmm. do. And mm -hmm. I think with me having so much knowledge and so much maturity mm -hmm. that which I bring to yeah. the set, you know, and among the girls, I think that that was my character, you mm -hmm. know, and not being able to move quickly, think quickly, you know, and think modeling, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? You know, and I, I think that was the most difficult thing um, mm -hmm. that I had to learn on the show. Mm -hmm. But something that I took away was that um, just being in the moment and the fact that I am this woman of age on the show and putting that aside for a second, mm -hmm. just putting that aside mm -hmm. and just living in the moment and living for me, you know, everything that I've been through in my life, I need to use that and elevate that to the next level. Well, what you is know? America, what is the top model supposed to aspire? What is Tyra and them looking for? The judges? Yes, Tyra. Because I know it's beyond beauty. I mean, we already know that all, all you girls are beautiful. But yes. what's she looking for? What is... I, I and this was so so unique mm -hmm. for Tyra to be able to identify certain individuals to be on this episode. I mean, on this cycle, mm -hmm. because she was looking for individuals that are just like you and I. Mm -hmm. You know, she said, "I'm going to get rid of the age limit, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to get rid of the height requirement. I'm going to get rid of so many different things. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to allow for anyone with a disability. Anyone, what? It, it just go ahead, whatever it was. I think what she's trying to do is change the definition of beauty mm. and so by doing that she ahead, actually Tyra. said you know what there are so many mm -hmm. women out there that are struggling on whether it's to look a certain way mm -hmm. or to be a certain size or mm -hmm. whatever. It's not about that. It's about who you are in the inside. And once we start pushing those conversations and talking to our young girls, our young men mm -hmm. about what beauty is really about, then we can start changing the definition of beauty. And I think that's what she is trying to convey. So she's you know, a well-rounded woman. Yes. Not only that, I, I think You're that gonna be well, you have yeah. to be able to recognize and identify identify your flaws that make you you, you unique mm -hmm. and those are your assets mm -hmm. you know and so we want you to capitalize off those assets mm -hmm. don't try to go after the person the next person and say oh my gosh she's so beautiful I need to look like her no mm -hmm. God made are. us yes be you mm -hmm. and God made us in, in his own light the, in, in his own image and so you need to accept who you are love yourself for who you are and love the skin you're in oh very and well said so you're gonna have to be the model and good luck to take the high road thank you I right you have to take the high road and a lot of the things that come against you oh yes you have to be mature you have to run your race and compete too but you've got to keep it with dignity and be the woman of god that you are That's yes right Good luck, girl. Thank you. You and got thank a you. lot. We'll be watching. Thank you. Jeez, America's Next Top is Model is so on VH1. But yes. you have a great event coming up. It's a pretty girl retreat. It is yeah, Sunday, is April that? 22nd, and it is in Atlanta, Atlanta Georgia. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that before yeah. we start giving up some of those uh, links for your information. Yes, Pretty Girl Retreat Conference is going to be held in Atlanta, Georgia on April 22nd. Mm -hmm. It's a one-day conference. And the theme of the conference is I'm That Girl. Oh. I'm That Girl is that confident, bold, vibrant young lady that, mm -hmm. you know, doesn't turn away from distractions. Mm -hmm. I mean, it turns away from distractions and keeps going, and keeps going mm -hmm. you know, and it's so 
so focused. And what we want to do is we want to bring those girls that are like that or if they're not like that. Mm -hmm. And if you want some help in trying to be that girl, then I want you to come on board and participate in this uh, in this conference, because what we're going to be doing is teaching young girls to identify their assets that make them unique mm -hmm. then and their strengths, because mm -hmm. once they've identified their strengths, then we can start to capitalize off of teaching them um, entrepreneurship skills, financial literacy, the STEM program. I mean, there oh, is, yeah. is so many things that they can do in life and we want them to go after their dreams. So we're, they're well-rounded. Yes. So they're beautiful, but you're, you're developing who you are yes. in all aspects of your life. And be advocates in their own communities. Is there speaking or is these classes? These, these, these are going to be um, different workshops throughout the workshops. day. We have some okay. great speakers mm -hmm. coming on board. Um, Carissa Jones, David mm -hmm. Shands. Um, mm -hmm. We we have uh, Linda Pearl. I mean, mm, I we have her. some Charlotte Wilson. Mm -hmm. We have some terrific speakers that are going to come in mm -hmm. and that are profound and going to get give an awesome message. And not oh, only that, we're going to have pink carpet arrivals. We're going to have a fashion show as well by three um, different designers. And we're going to give out awards. It's going to be spectacular. Congratulations. Pretty Thank Girl you. Retreat Conference. It is Sunday, you. April 22nd. Yes. It is in Atlanta, Georgia. And for more information, I want you to find Erin Green mm -hmm. on her Instagram at Erin Green. It's Erin Green on Instagram. Facebook is backslash It's Erin Green on Twitter at It's Erin Green. Your Snapchat, It's Erin Green. But your website is twinofakind.org mm -hmm. and www.prettygirlretreat.com. Yes. Erin, I want to thank you for coming yeah, on the show, but we'd like gosh. to ask this of all of our guests. Wonderful. Very well. The name of the show is called Joy in the House. Mm -hmm. the joy that we have in the midst of our challenges, in the midst of our struggles, and in the midst mm -hmm. of our successes. Right now, you're at a high point, and I got to ask you, what does Joy in My House mean to you in today's day and age? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a great question. Um, joy in My House means to me that... I, I need to know the Lord. Mm -hmm. You need to know the Lord and put him first in everything that you do. And I think that especially at a time, especially for me at this day and age, I need him more than anything in my life. I need to equip myself and um, and know who what my faith is and who he is. And so that's what's going to help me along my journey. Mm -hmm. And I think that Join the House, you guys, thank you so much for having me mm -hmm. on. Join the House is, oh my gosh, you guys are amazing. Aww. You know, to be able to share you your guys. story and have joy, you know, sp mm -hmm. speak the word. And it's it's so very profound. I, I appreciate well, the you've both of you. me, girl. You really have. You keep Aaron, going. Thank you. Thank Amen. you for coming and on the show. And your husband and your son. Lolita, thank you for and Richard, co hosting thank you. Richard. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, join us live every Sunday here at noon with life changing stories because next week we have Mark Chavez, executive director of the Boys and Girls Club, with a guest co host, Aaliyah Molden, the yeah. youngest girl on The Voice, is going to be guest co hosting. Ooh, You're not going to want to miss. Live every Sunday at noon with life changing stories and talent that will inspire you. Have a great and blessed day, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in to L.A. Talk Live and the Talk Live Broadcast Network, original reality radio, handcrafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. This is L.A. Talk Live, and we are more than just joy talk. Stay tuned. House, joy in my house, joy, I've got joy.